Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event tonight and have some really fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Karis and I will be serving as your facilitator for tonight. And so before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items. The first one is that you will notice that your camera and microphone are off. So this means that panelists can't see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions you have to any of our presenters at any time. This is just one of the many sessions happening, so be sure that you are checking out the schedule on the website. And then finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. So without further ado, I will go ahead and turn it over to our first, our first presenter, which is Michigan State University. Thanks. Paris, appreciate that. Good evening, everyone. Just bringing up my slideshow here, and I am definitely going to run through these slides very quickly um, since I only have six minutes. Um, but my name is Sylvia Hernandez. I am actually the manager of Illinois recruitment for Michigan State University, filling in for my colleague Tanya Kurzawa, who covers Minnesota. And I'll put some contact information in the chat box for you in a little bit. Uh, Michigan State University is a large four-year public institution located in East Lansing, Michigan. So if you're not familiar with where we're at, this definitely shows you exactly where in Michigan you can find us. Being a big school, we have about 50,000 total students, um, very diverse campus communities, students from all 50 states, about 140 countries, and 23% of our students are students of color. We do have over 200 areas of study, so major-wise, we offer you a lot of opportunity as far as things that you can go into. We're a very collaborative institution, so it's also very easy to double major or add minors. And we are most well known for business, education, engineering, science, and psychology. We also offer a lot of opportunities outside of the classroom. So research opportunities are plentiful. Students are constantly working on research and projects. We're one of the top 15 schools in the nation for entrepreneurship and innovation. And we have an awesome entrepreneurship minor. And then we are one of the top 10 schools in the nation for study abroad programs. All out-of-state students also get a study abroad scholarship, so we really encourage you to go on a study abroad if you come to MSU because it's kind of like free money. Um, a lot of this does play into our retention rate. Our students are really successful um, on campus as well as after graduation. Um, so being kind of a diverse campus experience, living on campus, being involved in clubs and organization helps our students really get acclimated. And then we do have a 94% placement rate after graduation, which is about 12% higher than the national average. We also have over half a million living alumni worldwide. So even if you don't wanna stay in Minnesota or maybe in the Midwest, we do have Spartans all over. So it's very easy to connect with the community. We also award students scholarships automatically when they apply to Michigan State. So the nice thing is your application for admission is your application for scholarships. And we do have additional scholarship resources on campus and we also take in outside scholarships as well. As far as applying to Michigan State, we do review transcripts pretty heavily. So we'd like to see what courses you've taken 9th through 11th grade. We do look at the rigor of your curriculum and your grade trend. We also take into consideration one essay and we do look at your honors, awards, and leadership experiences. We admit about 78% of the out-of-state students that apply to MSU. So although we are competitive, we're not highly selective. And as you can see here on the slide, we do not require letters of recommendation, and we are also test optional. For MSU, it does not hurt you to apply test optional. You still have the same chance of getting into MSU and the same chance for scholarships, no matter if you apply again with a test or without and you can apply through the MSU application, the Common App, or the Coalition App. So pretty easy as far as how to apply. As far as when, this chart just shows you a little bit about our deadlines. As you can see here, we do have early action. We also have regular decision and rolling admission. If you can apply by November 1, that's great because that's gonna give you maximum scholarship consideration. But if you can't apply by November 1, just apply anytime by February 1st. And then we do encourage you to visit our campus because we are a very big place. As you can see here, 5,300 acres of beautiful, beautiful scenery. So please come to our campus so that you can make sure you like it, make sure you feel comfortable there and just see everything that MSU and Michigan have to offer. And that is it for me. Thank you. And I'll put some more information in the chat. I'll pass it off. Perfect, thank you so much. We will keep things going with the University of Wisconsin-River Falls. 
Yes, hi everyone. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm gonna to quickly pull up my PowerPoint as well. Let's go, buddy. All right, sounds good. Everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Sarah Fern, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm from the University of Wisconsin, River Falls. Um, best of both worlds here at River Falls. You have the um, kind of friendly, safe community of River Falls located in the St. Croix River Valley, one of the biggest growing areas in Wisconsin on the western side. Um, it's also a beautiful place um, as well with um, over 15 parks locally, um, and you've got a bunch of state and county parks also locally within 15 minutes of River Falls. You also have the kind of convenience of being 30 minutes away from St. Paul, Minneapolis, and their suburbs. Um, this comes into play for a big factors in a couple different ways. That's entertainment, sports, cultural events, but it's also a big uh, avenue for us and our students for internships and job opportunities as well. Um, our students are also in terms of that size of campus. We're a medium-sized four-year public institution, so about 5,800 or so students on our campus, um, with that primary focus being you as a first-degree seeker. So tons of hands-on learning opportunities, um, classroom discussions, and getting out into your field to really explore those areas. We do also have a small population of graduate students that stick with us for a little bit longer. Um, as we navigate kind of size as well, medium in size institution for classroom sizes, that's that an average of 24 in a class classroom. So if you're looking for that personal connection with your faculty members that are 100% of the time teaching your classes, um, this is a great place for you. Anywhere from, um, I had a student last semester that was one of nine in a classroom to my art history class was at 40, 45 students. So you really do have kind of a really good setting there in a classroom setting. You're not a butt in a seat here. Um, in terms of our academic offerings, we have anything uh, and everything over 70 areas of study. Um, big moments for us, our big popular majors for us are going to be bio, biology or biomedical and health sciences, psychology, business administration, um, elementary and secondary education, and animal science as well. Um, this is kind of a structure thing for us, but we divide our academic um, offerings into four distinctive academic colleges. The arts and sciences houses those social and behavioral uh, courses or majors. We also have a ton of the fine arts and humanities, um, the sciences, um, and a lot of different offerings um, in that science realm um, with anywhere from the pre-health or pre-medical kind of routes um, through chiropractic or dental. Um, we also have the College of Business and Economics, which is AA CSB accredited on an academic standpoint, just making sure you're prepped and ready to go for those things. If you're looking for a business Business administration, accounting, or economics, um, and at the outcomes there, if you're looking to go local, global, um, or even regional here, we've got a good spot for you as well. Um, education and professional studies, um, and biases is my favorite one, but uh, anywhere from secondary and, uh, and uh, elementary education, we also has, have opportunities for communication sciences and disorders, um, social work, and health and human performance. Um, and lastly, the College of uh, Agriculture, Food, and Environmental Sciences that feeds on the line of animal and food science, um, working um, more so plant and earth science as well with horticultural crops and soil science, um, as well as geology, and then some agricultural related programs. And those kind of range anywhere from business to ag education and, and engineering as well. Um, talking a little bit more about what does it cost to come to school here, this is on your screen the entire academic year for you as a Minnesota resident with reciprocity included. Um, we include everything except for a parking permit essentially. So tuition for us is all of your classes, but for you as a full-time student or a textbook rental institution, all of your services across campus, anywhere from career help um, to working out at our Falcon Center, um, double room and meal plan, or then your living and room uh, boarding on here on campus, and those are also included um, to the figures here. That final total references everything before financial aid and before scholarship opportunities. Um, and there's tons of those available to about $2.6 million just this past year. Um, and we're excited to get things rolling for uh, the current um, academic and upcoming academic year as well. Um, so just to come up a couple updates, we're on the UW system application that's live up and running for our seniors that are in the space. Um, there's no application for the entire year this year. Um, and we're also test optional, providing you that opportunity to say yes, no, or not sure on the application. FAFSA is open. I encourage everyone to apply for FAFSA. That is officially open through FAFSA.gov. Um, and the UW River Falls scholarship application also opened up on October 1st. So as an admitted student, you gain access to that system um, to kind of start working away um, and getting some money taken off the top there. Um, let's stay in touch. I do have uh, another two other counselors um, actually in the space with me today, just kind of learning the ropes here. Um, but I also wanted to provide an opportunity for you to screenshot or take this information down as well. Uh, we're here to help and we are thrilled three uh, counselors that specifically work um, a lot of the time in Minnesota. Um, so thank you very much for being here today and let me know if you have any questions.
All right, perfect. We will get started, keep things going with Xavier University. Hi all, thanks so much for joining me. I apologize, I lost my meeting controls. There we go. All right, I'm Tara Malarkey. I am a regional recruitment director for Xavier University located in Cincinnati, Ohio. I am regionally based, however, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I work with students across the state of Wisconsin and across the state of Minnesota. So I'll have my contact information at the end of the presentation um, and certainly don't hesitate to reach out and connect with me. Make sure we move this here, okay. All right, so Xavier University is a medium-sized Catholic Jesuit university located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we are the Musketeers, and our motto is all for one and one for all. And you can kind of see just one small picture of uh, our, the way that our community is represented on campus. The Jesuits are an order of Catholic priests about 500 years old, founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola in Spain, founded on two main principles, things that we take really seriously on our campus. The first is education of the whole person, which is sort of in the format of a core curriculum that students take throughout all four years on campus. And the second is service. Service is not required whatsoever for our students to participate on campus, but as you can see here by our MOVE crew, it is definitely a part of the campus culture. So we really do value educating the whole person inside and outside of the classroom, as well as serving our local community, the Xavier community, as well as the world. I have a couple of quick facts about our student body. We're a medium-sized, um, about 5,000 undergraduate students. We also have a relatively small graduate population of students, just about 1,000 grad students. Um, we are uh, about three miles from downtown Cincinnati. We're still in the middle of Cincinnati, um, but just three miles from the center of Cincinnati. So we do have a nice um, sort of sprawling campus feel, uh, an almost suburban feel that we're in a urban setting. 55% of our students come from outside of the state of Ohio. Um, we do come from all 50 states. We come from about 40 countries around the world. We study almost 90 majors um, in four academic colleges. So I mentioned we have about 90 majors. We have direct entry into all of our programs on campus. Um, so if, you're, if you know what you wanna study, you can definitely apply directly to that major. Um, but because we have that core curriculum that students have to take throughout their four years, we don't require students declare a major until the end of their sophomore year. Our small medium size is also advantageous in the classroom in that um, we have an average class size of just about 21 and a student to faculty ratio of 12 to one as well. About a third of our students study abroad in some capacity. We do have opportunities for students to go abroad for a semester, for a full year, as well as break programs in January or the winter term. Um, and many of them are faculty led. And we also have several that are service based. So if students want to study and serve while abroad, that is a really, really um, good option for the Xavier students to take advantage of. We also have direct entry into our five distinct honors programs that span um, across the entire university, as well as some uh, distinct programs within the university, like the College of Business. Um, and then we also have 93%, um, uh, I'm gonna say, 93% of our students rate their Xavier experience as excellent when they graduate. Some of our top majors, uh, the most popular majors for um, students applying to Xavier, uh, nursing is definitely most popular. We also are really strong in business and health sciences, um, but you'll see number four here is exploratory. And basically what that means is many of our students are interested in coming in completely undecided. They think they know what they wanna study, they are interested in a couple of different things, um, but it's perfectly okay for them to explore and figure it out as they go. I mentioned students don't have to declare a major until the end of their sophomore year, but even if you don't have a major until your sophomore year, coming into your junior year, you can still graduate in four years, which is pretty fantastic. Even though we're a relatively small institution, we are really proud of the fact that we have 19 Division I athletics. We play in the Big East, and basketball is our premier sport. Um, we're really proud to play uh, in the Cintas Center, which is located right on campus. All of our Division I athletics take place right on campus. We don't have to head off campus for that. And every single student ticket is free. So students um, don't have to pay any additional cost for um, basketball games or any of the other athletic events that take place on campus to support the Xavier Musketeers. For those students that are interested in applying to Xavier this fall, we have a rolling admission application that is available now. You can apply as early as now up until December 1st. That is our priority deadline, especially for students that are consider, considering um, applying to the direct entry nursing program. We require an application as well as an official high school transcript to apply. And our application is test optional, available either on our website or on the Common App. Both applications are free. We encourage students to file the FAFSA to. Um, to be eligible for additional grants 
loans and federal work study, but of course we do have scholarships available as well. Tuition for fall of 22 is about $56,000 a year, but every student that's admitted is automatically considered for merit-based scholarship, which will range between 16 and $24,000. Definitely reduces the cost of your tuition um, and your Xavier experience. Of course, you can be eligible just for applying for additional scholarships um, and grants through financial aid, as well as merit-based scholarships as well. All right, so one of the most important things I think about Xavier is our commitment to success. And obviously that looks different for every single student, but every student as you come in as a freshman at Xavier has a success team already in place that's there to help you. So students will have an academic advisor that they're required to meet with every single semester. They'll have a career coach that they can meet with right away freshman year to help get their resume ready. They'll also have a financial aid counselor that will help them make sure that their finances are in order and all of their grants and scholarships and loans are on their package. But students also have a success coach whose primary job it is to help you transition from high school to college, wherever it is that you're coming from. If you've never done laundry before, or if you're really not feeling well and you're not sure how to access the health center, our college, as all colleges, have tons and tons of resources, and we really want our students to feel their best, both mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, so that they can succeed in the classroom and do well overall. We also have professional mentorship program and peer mentorship programs available for all students, which can be flash mentoring, just one quick mentor, mentor session, or we can have sort of a, a long-term mentor program available as well. Ultimately, 98% of our students that graduate from Xavier um, are employed or in graduate school, working full-time in the career of their choice within six months of graduation. So we're really, really, really proud of the 98 success rate that we have for our students upon graduation. Here you can go ahead and take a snapshot of my contact information. Again, I'm located in Milwaukee, but definitely work with students across the state of Minnesota. So I will um, be happy to connect with you if any questions arise. Thanks. Thanks so much. We will keep things going and I will turn it over next to Florida Southern College. Awesome, thank you so much. I appreciate it, excited to be here tonight to share a little bit more information about Florida Southern College. Uh, to get started in a little bit about Florida Southern, my name is Joe Madigan. I serve as our Director of Undergraduate Recruitment Outreach. I go by pronouns he, him, his. And just sharing some basic information about FSC or Florida Southern College. Uh, we are Florida's oldest private university. We are located in Lakeland, Florida. If you're not familiar with that, we are halfway in between Orlando and Tampa. Uh, 30 minutes east of us is the Walt Disney World Resort. 30 minutes west of us is downtown Tampa. We were a small private university uh, with really a global focus and a focus on you as a student. We have approximately 3,000 undergraduate students earning bachelor's degrees and a small graduate and doctoral student population of about six to 700 students. Uh, about 60% of our students are from the state of Florida, but 40% are from outside the state of Florida. And of that, about 30% are from the Midwest, including from Wisconsin, Illinois, and of course, Minnesota. Overall, our student body represents 44 different states and territories and 50 foreign countries. One of the things we're most proud of is Florida Southern gets a lot of recognition. We were recently ranked number eight among schools in the South by US News World Report, number 10 in the nation for most innovative, and of course, our beautiful campus at Florida Southern gets a lot of attention and a lot of different ranking guides, including being ranked number one most beautiful in the nation previously. We have a lot for you to choose from. Over 70 different academic programs of study that are spread across five different schools to study within. And we even offer accelerated degree programs and pre-professional tracks to help you get to that next step, whether that be in medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, or our own master's and doctoral programs at Florida Southern in physical therapy and psychology. Here's a short little list of the different opportunities and we don't want you to get overwhelmed because no matter what you're looking for, you're likely to find it at Florida Southern College across our five different schools. About a quarter of our students are in the STEM areas, education, business, marine biology, and our direct admit nursing programs as well as our fine arts programs are some of the most popular at Florida Southern. No matter what you choose, you're going to get a well-rounded education is we focus on you as a person, and we are a liberal arts university at our core. In addition to focusing upon you as a student, you're going to have the opportunity to engage in your major right away. 
We believe in learning by doing. And when we say you are the focus, you're going to get to do research starting your first semester, your first year, get your feet wet going out into the Tampa estuary, doing conservation work, or maybe you see yourself as an individual that wants the opportunity to do antibiotic research your first year. You can do that at Florida Southern. Our students are 100% faculty taught and advised. We have no large lecture halls as our average class size is 17 students and the biggest classes on campus are capped at 40 to 45 students. This allows you to feel comfortable and explore what you want to do both on campus and off campus. We provide those opportunities as well. At Florida Southern, we have three guarantees. We guarantee the opportunity to study abroad, whether that be as part of our junior journey program going away for seven to 10 days, or studying at a partner university, these trips are included in the cost of your college tuition at Florida Southern for no additional cost, you get that global exposure. We guarantee an internship with many of our students having the opportunity to do that locally with companies like Fortune 100 companies within the Tampa, Orlando, or Lakeland area or going back home to do so. Know that's going to be guaranteed. We also guarantee graduation in four years time at Florida Southern. And if you don't graduate in four years, we will cover the cost of the college tuition it takes you to graduate after the fourth year. In fact, 85% of our students graduate in four years time or less because they're coming in with AP, IB, dual enrollment or ACE classes. And this leads to outcomes. 80 to 95% of our students are gainfully employed or in graduate school within six months after graduation. Including this year, we tout a 100% acceptance rate into medical school, veterinary medical school, pharmacy, and physical therapy out of our pre professional tracks, as well as a list of employers you see here. But overall, we want you to have a great experience as well. Florida Southern is a residential university with 93% of our students living on campus in one of our 16 different residential options. We also have 10 different dining locations. If your taste buds are eager, you can find Steak and Shake on campus, Starbucks, Kieran Sushi, Public Subs. We have our pretzel maker and our brand new computer science building, which also touts our autonomous vehicle creation and cybersecurity labs that just got a over a $1 million grant donation from the National Science Foundation. In addition to outstanding living opportunities, school spirit is big at Florida Southern. We have 20 Division II varsity programs. It's free for students to go to events. We even have some cool, pun intended, sports like ice hockey, we're a Division III program for, and water skiing, we have Division I at Florida Southern, as well as our own eSports arena. There's something for everyone at Florida Southern with over 150 different clubs, organizations, activities, from community service to Greek life to campus ministries, you're going to find it. But at the core of who a Florida Southern student is, is our cornerstone. No matter where you come from, no matter what you believe, no matter your background, you're welcome on our campus. And that's our honor code at Florida Southern. We have no religious requirements, but we're looking for a good fit student who embodies that. And the first step is to apply. It's free to apply for admission to Florida Southern College via a common application, the coalition application, or our own online application. We are currently accepting early, early action applications until November 1st. When you apply to Florida Southern, we're gonna need your high school transcript, a letter of recommendation, an essay, and we are a test optional school. You can apply with or without test scores, that's your choice. Some of the averages of student coming into Florida Southern this past year are listed here. We encourage you to apply earlier to have the best opportunity for scholarships, and we are rolling admission, meaning you will get your admission decision within three to four weeks of applying for admission to Florida Southern. My last note tonight is talking about scholarships. We know that affording a college education is a big consideration. And please know that Florida Southern is consistently rated as a best value school once again for the 2021-22 academic year. At the same time you're reviewed for admission, you're automatically considered for merit scholarships that range this year between $7,000 and $21,000 per year. We have full tuition, full ride scholarships you can apply for. And Florida Southern College is proud each and every year to meet well over 90% of demonstrated academic need on average for students, including for our out-of-state students, offering talent scholarships as well in the fine arts, athletics, and ROTC, to name a few. Tonight, I'm here representing Florida Southern College, but you also have a team that's behind you on campus of academic advisors, support units. We wanna make sure this is the right fit. The QR code that's listed here gets you in contact with our team, as well as here's some information on visiting our beautiful campus we love to welcome you to Florida Southern. Thanks for joining tonight and learn a little bit more about our schools. Thank you. We will get keep going with our next college, which is the College of St. Scholastica. 
Hello, everyone. One second, just letting this load up here. There we go. So hi, my name is Caitlin. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at the College of St. Scholastica. We are a four-year private institution located up in Duluth, Minnesota. So about two hours north of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, so a little bit about us first and our students. We have just about 1,500 traditional undergrad students. So we're definitely on the smaller end for schools, I would say. Um, again, we're a four-year private institution up in Duluth. You can see the stats there. Um, a lot of our students are primarily from Minnesota, but then we do also see students from um, Wisconsin, North Dakota, and then all over the US um, and throughout the world as well. A big percent of our population are first generation students. So about 30% of our students are first gen um, and we're represented from about 20 different countries. So Duluth, Duluth is a really fun college town, I would say. Um, we, you kind of get the best of both worlds with living in Duluth. So you get the outdoor aspect. Um, if you don't know anything about Duluth, it's very outdoorsy. There's tons and tons of miles of trails. Um, we have different lake walk access. Um, you can go up the North shore a little bit more and go ski kayaking, rock climbing, different things. So very outdoorsy, but we do also have a, the city life too. Um, so very vibrant city scene with concerts and restaurants and shopping. It's about 100,000 people here in Duluth. So um, not too big, not too small, um, and not too far away from the Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul area as well. And then being in Duluth, we have a ton of student discounts too. So um, we have our college, our private college here, but then there's also the University of Minnesota Duluth, Lake Superior College, um, University of Wisconsin Superior. So there's a ton of colleges in the area. So we offer a lot of student discounts at movie theaters, uh, restaurants, um, different shopping areas as well. Our faculty, so all classes are taught by our faculty. So we are 100% taught by faculty and no teaching assistants. Um, our average class size is just about 15. So nice and small classes, really good personalized one-on-one -on -one attention with your professors. They're gonna know you, they're gonna know your name. Um, and you're gonna, they're gonna be there to help you not only while you are at St. Scholastica and they're gonna be your advisors and they're gonna be helping you, you know, plan for what classes you should and shouldn't take, but they're also gonna be there to help you when you move on and moving towards your career. And they're gonna be the ones that are mentoring you, helping you find internships and job shadowing opportunities and really um, kind of being your network to get on and move on into your career. Academic programs. So we have over 40 different majors and minors to choose from. I just listed a few of them on here. Some of our largest ones, our biggest one is nursing. So that's the largest program that we have on campus. Um, we're actually the second largest nursing school in the state behind the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities. Um, another big program for us is our physical therapy program. So we get a ton of students in our health sciences, as well as business. Business continues to grow and grow each year um, with our programs. But again, there's a list of all of them there. We do offer also offer graduate programs. So, um, you know, if you want to go on, get your doctorates of physical therapy, nurse practitioner, um, masters of occupational therapy, we offer a ton of different graduate programs as well. Campus life. So a lot of stuff to do on campus here. So tons of different clubs and organizations. There's over 60 different clubs to choose from. Um, and like I know many of my other colleagues on here, if we don't offer a club, you can always start it. You just need six or more students to get that started. Um, so that's just kind of a list of some of the stuff, whether it's you know an academic based club or um, social justice or a club like rugby or something along those lines, we have that offered for you at St. Scholastica. Next is a little bit more about our athletics. So we are actually, we just switched conferences this year. So this fall, we started in the MIAC. The MIAC conference is in primarily, I would say in the Twin Cities, so Minneapolis, St. Paul area. Um, so we just moved into that conference, which we're really excited about. And we have a ton of students um, on campus that are student athletes. So about 30% of our students are student athletes here. So we have a big population of them on campus as well. Fine Arts is another huge program at St. Scholastica. So whether that's music or theater, um, we offer band, choir, um, there's some orchestra programs and then the theater, we usually do about three programs a year for that as well. We also offer a music scholarship that is up to $4,000 per year. So a lot of students um, enjoy applying for that one and you don't have to be a music major or minor to be a part of our music program as well. 
Okay, so the application process, like a lot of people on here said, we have our own application and it is actually free. And then we're also on the Common App. So whichever one you choose to apply, we look at them both the same. We're not gonna prefer one over the other. Um, we basically just need your application and your transcript. We are also test optional. So you can send us your test scores if you want to, but if you feel like they do not represent you well as a student, you do not need to send us those scores um, if you don't want to. And then we have a couple different deadlines there as well. None of them, they're all non-binding, so you're not committing to St. Scholastica with any of them, um, but we do have a few different deadlines on there too. Last thing, so being a private institution, um, the sticker price always does look higher. However, uh, we give away great academic scholarships. So everyone that comes to St. Scholastica receives a Benedictine Merit Scholarship. This year, our scholarship levels went up quite a bit. We are ranging from 21 to 28,000 per year. And how we're doing that is we're taking, we're gonna have, we have a chart basically, and we'll take the higher of either your GPA or your ACT slash SAT score. So you can check out the chart online or I can add it here in the chat as well, um, but it'll be whichever is higher. So you can kind of see if your GPA is higher, you can take that one, or if your ACT is higher, you can take that one. Um, and then you receive the scholarship all four years. Um, we also do have an awesome college readiness scholarship. So if you are involved in any sort of um, college readiness program, TRIO, Upward Bound, AVID, anything along those lines, um, it's a $3,000 scholarship. And then if you visit campus, it's a $5,000 scholarship. So that's a really good scholarship we like to highlight. And then we have tons of other ones too on our website um, that we would really encourage you to apply for. That is my contact information, so feel free to, you know, screenshot that, and um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. As a reminder, if you all have any questions for any of the panelists that you have heard from tonight, feel free to go ahead and put those in the Q&A, and they will answer those kind of as they come in, but we will go to our final college for the night, which is Boston University. All right, hello everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'll go ahead and also share my screen with you all. Uh, so my name is Ayan Naomi. I'm Assistant Director of Admissions at Boston University uh, and the Rev to Minnesota. So I travel here and I also read um, your applications once you do apply to BU. Uh, just like my colleagues, we're going to do a little bit of rapid fire about BU. Uh, so Boston University is a private research and teaching institution located in the city of Boston. Uh, there are a little under 16,000 undergraduate students attending BU. Our students come from all over the world. 24% of our undergraduates are international. 30% of our students are from in-state and the rest uh, are from out of state coming from all over the United States um, and the different parts of the country, mainly the East Coast, but also um, other parts of the country uh, as well that are represented at BU. In terms of academics, there are 300 different areas of study, so majors, minors, and academic programs that are housed under our 10 different schools and colleges. Our largest college is the College of Arts and Science. It houses 50% of the undergraduate population and 70 different areas of study. Uh, the rest of the schools and colleges are more for professionals, so they're focused on a specific aspect of academics, like our question 12 business, College of Engineering, and so on. So when you apply to BU, you will apply directly into one of those schools and colleges. You can be undeclared or you can select one of the programs that they have. If you don't know what college to pick, you can start in the College of Arts and Science. And then as you move into your enrollment and start at Boston University, you're able to move across the different schools and colleges and the different academic areas. So you're highly encouraged to take advantage of the academic variety of flexibility that we have, uh, either by adding on minors or adding on majors in your core school or college or across the other programs as well. So our mission is really to get you to experience these 300 different areas of study in whichever way makes sense to you, um, either through your core requirements for your major or also through the liberal arts requirements that we have through a program called the BU Hub. And the hub is designed in a way that is a, a set of learning goals that you're expected to achieve before you graduate. Uh, so those learning goals will guide your course selection and that's how you complete the liberal arts component, not only experiencing different areas of interest, but also um, uh, adding that variety of flexibility to your curriculum. In terms of our class environment, our faculty to student ratio is one to 10. 70% uh, of the courses that are offered at BU are capped at 30 students and the average class size is 27 students. So 
to your surprise, it is on the smaller scale and having um, a small learning environment is one of those key experiences of Boston University. Outside of the class, our students are very busy in a different expansion learning opportunities. Study abroad is very popular amongst our students. 40% uh, of our undergraduates usually uh, study abroad throughout their time at BU, either through one of the Boston University programs where we have a partnership with a local college or university where you're traveling. You'll essentially be taking the same courses you would in Boston, just in a different city, in a different academic setting. Majority of those also have a, 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 an internship or a research component built into the study abroad experience. Um, and it's also part of your tuition package. So it's not at a cost difference to our students to go abroad through our specialized BU programs. We are also a research institution. So you're highly encouraged to complete a research experience either through the, those liberal arts learning goals that we mentioned. Some of our students are required to do research for their school or college, like our students in the College of Engineering or through the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, which is very popular amongst our students. And those research experiences are not limited to STEM fields only. They're open to all disciplines, um, to all types of students, either with their own ideas or through pre-existing through pre uh, research positions that we have on our campus. In terms of our campus community or the BU community in general, our students uh, have a lot going on for them on campus. There are more than 500 different clubs and organizations, uh, anything from club sports, Greek life, academic uh, related clubs and organizations, leadership, fun and leisure. It's all available there for you to take advantage of. Uh, our students tend to be very busy with these um, involvements outside of the class to spend some free time, but also gain some experience. And while you're um, off of campus, you still have the rest of the city of Boston, which is a very beautiful place if you have gotten the chance to visit, just to give you an idea of where our campus is located. Um, this is downtown Boston, and as you head west, you'll go into a neighborhood called Back Bay. You can see the Sigo sign right here, and that's the length of our campus. Um, it, it goes on for about a mile and a quarter along this major street called Commonwealth Avenue. So you can see the red are our academic building, light blue are residence hall, the green, that's our student areas, and the orange or yellow color are our dining halls. And you can see everything is right here within this outline, which we call the BU bubble. It makes it very easy to, for you to build community while still being integrated within the city of Boston. In terms of uh, the application process and being considered for Boston University, we use holistic application reviews using all of the information that you give us in the decision making process. So everything is important from your academics to your whatever recommendation um, and writing pieces. In terms of recommended curriculum, three to four years of core academic progress is what is required of you or what are you expected to have by the time of application to BU, which is very common for you as it is a high school requirement for a lot of students. Uh, our application pieces are pretty typical. These are things that you probably will be sending to all of your colleges and universities. Um, if you are interested in the College of Fine Arts, they do require an audition. I would say that's the only unique requirement there. Um, in terms of our academic profile, um, here you can see everything. The most important piece is that we are test optional uh, for students who are seniors applying this year, hopefully adapting that full-time moving forward, uh, but that's, that's where our policy stands. Um, regular decision or early decision based on the track and the interest that you have in Boston University, you could follow either or. And in terms of financial assistance, we do meet 100% need for students who are offered admission. So you can see there's a pretty generous financial aid packaging for students. There are also two merit-based scholarships. The presidential is $25,000, and that's for once every year you're at BU, it's automatic consideration. And our trustee scholarship is full tuition and required fees. And for that, again, you apply by December 1st and also write one additional essay to your application. So no uh, scholarship. Uh, applications for us, just your common app or coalition app will qualify you for automatically for that review. And that is all the information I have. Uh, we do have a lot of virtual programming, so highly recommend you take advantage of that if you are interested in BU. Thank you. All right, we have just a few minutes left. Um, and so I'm going to end things um, with just a quick Q&A um, that I would love to hear um, from all of our colleges. So if they want to go ahead 
and turn their cameras on, turn their microphones on. We will get started in the order that you got to hear from them today. Um, and so my question for you all is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I'll start. Um, I think for Michigan State University, um, I would just say that being, you know, the eighth or ninth largest school in the country, I definitely want students to remember to come visit um, just because it's a really big place population wise and really big place size wise. And you definitely want to make sure that you feel comfortable there and you like such a big campus environment. Great question as well. Um, I would definitely say the inclusivity of our campus as well as just the the beauty of it has a big component to it as well. Um, it's a, a great time here at River Falls um, and just make, knowing that the convenience of our location as well, for those of you that obviously are just over in Minnesota, we're 45 minutes away, you still get that access to go home to family birthdays and gatherings if you'd like to um, and still make it back for classes and those kind of things. So that's kind of a cool um, kind of thing to kind of incorporate into our campus, but gorgeous campus um, and continues to be recognized as one of the best in the Midwest. Um, I think campus is probably similar um, for me as well. Um, Xavier's located in the middle of Cincinnati, which is about the same size as Minneapolis and St. Paul, um, but it's just across the river from Kentucky. So the pace of living is just a little bit slower. Um, there's not much traffic um, and people are incredibly friendly. It's a very Midwestern feel, um, but almost Southern in sort of the pace of life. So I really, really, really love um, that it's a very sort of warm and welcoming place where everyone can kind of be themselves. I think for Florida Southern College, I'm going to actually use a little bit of who FSC stands for. So Florida stands for a super state. We are a booming economy, lots of people moving to Florida. It also has that kind of small town feel and that community atmosphere that's Southern and hospitable. That's the Southern piece of our campus and the campus culture there, but still being welcoming, having those traditions as part of the campus that's there. And then college stands for outstanding academics that are focused on you. So if you think of FSC or Florida Southern College, that's who we are as a university focused on the student but have our background and our traditions, our cornerstones, our campus culture, and who we are as a school. Um, for Saints Classica, I'm gonna kind of echo what River Falls and Xavier said with uh, more of like the location and kind of having our own niche where, you know, we're not in the middle of nowhere, but we're also not, you know, downtown in a huge city either. It's kind of a happy medium of, we still have that city life, but we also have the outdoorsy life, but you also feel like it's a small town, but it's not super small because it's about 100,000 people. So um, kind of the best of all worlds, I would say with our location. Um, so that'd be probably the biggest thing I'd say about seeing Scholastica. There are a lot of things about BU. It's really hard to narrow that down, but for us, I would say uh, we are a Goldilocks school in terms of size and the number of students that are there. Um, it's a place where you can have that one-on-one -on -one attention and still be submerged in your educational experience, but continue to meet people every day from all over the United States and all over the world and continue to expand your horizons with on-campus and opportunities and also the city of Boston and all that it has to offer. All right, well, thanks so much, y'all. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, when you close this window, you will see a link to a quick five minute survey that we would really appreciate any feedback you can provide us. Um, and I encourage you all to check back to the schedule and sign up to more for more sessions because there are tons more happening tonight. And then finally, you will be able to um, find this session's recording as well as all the other ones at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Thank you so much and have a good night.